Does DeWalt's Atomic Bandsaw cure your compact cutting itch? We'll find out in just a moment. I'm Tim Johnson. You're watching Shop Tool Reviews. We have the DeWalt DCS 377. What is it? It's the Atomic Brushless Compact Bandsaw. Now it has a one and three quarter inch cutting capacity. Well, where does it fit? Well, the Atomic series was meant to fill that niche of that compact tool. In other words, to meet the needs of say 80, 90% of the work you may do and give you a lighter and easier tool to handle. So it may be lighter and smaller, in this case, one-handed design. So it's really a great tool if it actually handles what they claim it will. So will it actually cut one and three quarter inch material? Well, let's actually find out. We'll take a closer look at each one of these features. So we'll dive in, take a closer look at them, discuss these, and then we'll actually use it on a bunch of material as you maybe can see here. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about pricing. We'll talk about warranty and then what we think of performance. We have the DeWalt DCS 377. Now in this form, uh, we've got the four amp hour battery. We have a charger and the bag. This is, is the DCS 377Q1. So Q1 uh, designates that this is the kit with the battery and the charger as well. We'll go over pricing here in one moment. So anyway, the DCS 377, uh, if, if you just wanted it by itself. So a few things about this. Number one, this is the Atomic series. So this is the Atomic 20 volt brushless one and three quarter inch cordless bandsaw. Obviously one and three quarter inch. That's our gap here. That's the, the capacity of the cut. And in this case, it's both the capacity in round and square cutting as well. And the depth uh, just about meets, um, or, or actually the depth a little bit exceeds the width, but for the most part, it's one and three quarter inch by one and three quarter inch. Now, obviously this is the atomic series. And if you know the atomic series, then you realize that it's part of a compact series where they're giving brushless motors. We're getting the power of brushless, the efficiency of brushless, uh, but trying to fit it into a compact form. So it, it's lighter and uh, more compact uh, for that worker, whether they're doing, you know, on-site construction stuff or in the shop. So this is not the end all be all tool. This is not the tool that says I can cut everything. This is an efficient tool. This is one of those that you can grab easily with one hand and make your cuts with. So again, if it's, if it's too small to make your cuts, it's not meant to cut everything. But there are some really nice features on this saw, starting with the brushless technology, the brushless motor. Uh, also, you get your DeWalt uh, ergonomics, which if you like DeWalt handles, it, it looks the same, whether it's an impact wrench, uh, uh, a drill, an impact driver, um, it looks all pretty much the same and it's going to hold the same. So they have great ergonomics in their handles um, and uh, you see the rubber over molding. Uh, you get the same trigger style design as like you would be holding an impact, whether you're holding an impact driver or a drill or this bandsaw. So real easy to hold, real easy to handle. And by the way, we also get a five speed dial here. So we're powered by our 20 volt battery. And by the way, this is a four amp hour battery. So slim pack design, but still a four amp hour 20 volt design. So we're powered by 20 volts, got our brushless motor, and then we have a five speed dial here. Now this is good. This five speed dial is going to control it from a setting of one at 150 feet per minute, all the way up to 380 feet per minute on speed five. Now we also get a variable speed trigger. So even though I'm in speed five, I can make that blade go really slow. or I can crank it all the way up to that 380 feet per minute. So we can use our speed dial. We can also use our variable speed trigger. And by the way, with this one handed design, we do have a safety lock here that's uh, kind of spring loaded, if you will. So we have to push that every time we pull the trigger. So if I'm not pushing that button, I cannot pull the trigger. So I can push that over with my thumb, pull the trigger, and then I can let go of it. The nice thing is if you're left handed, no problem. It's over here as well. So we can push this from either side to unlock the tool. It doesn't have to slide one way, sliding either way will unlock this tool. You can see I can push that way or I can push this way. We get a rafter hook or a joist hook or you know something you can hang this on, whether you're hanging it on a ladder or you're hanging it on a two by four, 
um, or hanging it on your wall, what have you, you get that rafter hook built right in, or you can take that off if you want to. Also built in is the ability to tool connect. So DeWalt's tracking chips uh, is called Tool Connect. Take these two screws out and that chip will screw right into there. And then the battery kind of hides it, protects it or what have you. But when, you're, when you know what to look for, you can tell uh, that little Tool Connect bulge out there, that's what that's for. One thing I really like on this little bandsaw is the protective bottom here as well as the clips that are kind of protecting the, the blade and wheels. So we can flip these and I like the metal clasp. So give you a sense of security, if you will, nothing plastic that's gonna break. Obviously the cover is plastic, but that's not a big deal. Uh, we get brushes here to keep the wheel clean. And then we have our blade, which is a 1418 TPI blade, variable tooth blade. Uh, again, 1418. So it's gonna cut most of your mild steel products with no problem at all. Uh, we have our double bearings that are basically our guide rollers. It's keeping those that, that blade tracked. However, we have in addition to those rollers, that's gonna keep it from side to side jumping somewhere, but also from tracking that depth, uh, we have a tracking, a blade tracking adjustment right here and built in here. We also have the Allen wrench, which will control that. So we'll back off that lock nut and use our Allen wrench to set the tracking if that blade's starting to walk one way or the other. And to release that blade, the blade release is right here, no tools needed. So we can open that all the way up. And then we can get to our blade, take it off if we need to, or put it back on, what have you. And then you'll see here when I close this back down, that tightens up that wheel. And now we're all nice and tight and ready to go. We also have a brush here that keeps this clean. So as we get metal particulate uh, starting to fly around in here, this brush is gonna help keep this drive wheel clean so we're not uh, getting hard material in there and, uh, and skipping or uh, slipping that wheel. Now, in addition to the tool connect, this tool is also lanyard ready. So we can hook a lanyard up to it and, uh, and be able to, you can see the threaded hole design here as well as here. And so we're ready to hook our lanyards to it. So if you're working at heights, if you're working off of lifts and so forth, this thing is ready to go and you're going to, to meet those specifications needed when you're working at heights. And then one last thing, we have an LED light right here that shines on that area where you're cutting. Now let's weigh this thing and see what kind of weight we have. Okay, our scale is going to zero out. And we're at pounds and ounces. We're going to weigh it with that four amp hour battery on there. So seven pounds, 12 and a half ounces. So let's call that seven and three quarter pounds. So battery tool and all. Now, just to give you an idea, we'll give a larger size DeWalt bandsaw with four amp hour battery as well. We're at nine pounds, five and a half ounces. So we're almost looking at two whole pounds more than the Atomic. So that's what you're looking at when you're going to an Atomic series. Now, you can't cut as much, but again, that's the whole point is if the majority of the stuff that you're cutting is smaller, then it makes more sense if you can grab a tool like this that is gonna save you some headache, not only in weight, but let's also just take a gander at just an idea of the size. So uh, the Atomic is about 13, a little less than 13 inches long and you look here, we're at 16 inches long uh, with the larger DeWalt. Uh, and then width-wise the same way, covering a lot more ground with that larger saw than with the Atomic. But again, as you need to, when you need to step up to a larger cut, we're getting almost a full inch, a little more than two and a half inches cut capacity across these jaws as, as opposed to the Atomic. So very efficient tool, uh, very quick tool to use, single-handed design, unlike this, is meant for two hands, uh, but again, it's not gonna cut everything you ever desire to cut, but when you do need to cut smaller stuff, this is gonna be a great tool for that. Let's cut some stuff. Okay, so we have chalked up in the vise here. I think this is three quarter inch uh, aluminum tubing. Not a problem whatsoever. Very easy to make our cuts here. So that's obviously no problem whatsoever. Another great use for this would be all thread, something that uh, every construction site and even in the shop 
A lot of times you're using all thread and to make those cuts, grab your atomic saw. And make quick work of cutting all thread. It also makes a very clean cut. So a, a little quick work of a grinder, but you're not burning through it and uh, pretty easy to handle as well. Now getting into larger stuff, one inch tubing. So this is one inch, uh, I think 10, 10 gauge wall or eighth inch. No problem whatsoever. And even some, uh, looks like one and a half inch angle iron. No problem at all. Another obvious one would be uh, rebar. So job site or doing some work and you need some rebar cut. Obviously. And again, nice clean cut without a lot of heat and sparks. And here's a good one to look at. So here we've got some, uh, some aluminum tubing here and on the end it's neck down. And it's neck down to about 1.6 inches, so a little less than one and three quarter. So no problem at all making that cut. Now, here's the thing. Up here, we're at a full two inches and our jaws won't go around that. But the nice thing is where the plate is not here on this on this bandsaw, it can still fit that full two inches there. So you see here, it's at 2.1, almost 2.2 inches right in there. So in this case, where I am cutting something close to this uh, two inch wall here, I can cut. All the way down through it even though I'm swallowing that two inch tubing there. Now one thing that would be nice, so I've got a little bit of a one by two rectangle tubing. You'll see here. That's as far as I can go with this cut. I'm almost cut all the way through. In fact, I can grab this piece and pull it off. And I'll show you that I almost cut through that full two inch piece. So the depth, we're at almost two inches, where as the width, we're right at one and three quarter. I'm not going at all to say that that's a limitation of this tool, because again, at some point, you have to realize it's not compact anymore if you keep, you know, growing the jaws, growing the depth, and so forth. So this is a compact tool meant to cut smaller material, and they've set it at one and three quarter inches. Now, do I wish it would cut two inch tubing because I use a lot of one by two rectangle tubing in the shop? Sure, but again, I'm not gonna hold it against the tool because it's not designed to cut that. But just wanted to point that out that we almost have the depth to cut through that full two inches. Really nice compact saw, easy to handle, uh, not too heavy, so something that I would much rather carry than its bigger brother. But again, the bigger brother has that uh, has its use as well in the shop. Well, this little guy did very well. As you could see through the cuts, it cut everything from rebar to all thread that you're cutting all the time to uh, round tubing, square tubing, and even almost cut through one by two inch rectangle tubing. Man, I wish it would do that, but I understand. Listen, I only brought up its bigger brother not to show any limitations of the atomic, but to show you that sometimes you just need a bigger tool for the job. 
It's the same way in life. Let's, let's take a car, for example. You may buy a smart car. Why do you buy that smart car? You're probably wanting to save on fuel. It's not going to pull your boat to the lake on the weekend, and it's probably not going to take your five kids uh, to church or wherever else you may go, but it may do the 80% of travel that you do, so it makes sense to purchase it. Same way with this. The atomic saw, if it'll handle 80, 90% of the work you're doing, like cutting that smaller tubing, cutting that all thread, cutting that, uh, um, that rebar or even smaller angle iron, then by all means, it makes more sense to hold a lighter tool, to handle it with one hand, be able to use it with one hand. So that's where this atomic fits and we think it fits very well. Performance wise, it did fine. It, it definitely met the capacity needs or the capacity claims. Um, and then as far as cutting through, I, it, it did absolutely fine. I think you're gonna have to replace blades from time to time, but that's no fault of this tool. I like the tracking on it, that you can actually adjust the tracking. I also like the cover with the metal clasp and uh, obviously the no tool needed to actually change out the blades. Those are nice things to have. We like that it's a brushless tool as well. The Atomic Series, all of those are brushless if I'm not mistaken. So we get that efficiency and uh, as well as power in a smaller package with that, with that brushless motor. So longer run times as well. Hey, make sure you check it out. Again, it's the DCS 377 Q1. So add a Q1 to that if you want the you want the kit like we see it here and price on that. So for the kit, for the tool, the four amp hour battery, the charger and the, and the bag, you're looking at $299. Now you get a three year warranty with that. If you want just a bare tool, it's gonna run you $199. And again, you're gonna get that three year warranty for it. Uh, so make sure you check this out. Great little tool. Also keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And hey, if you don't mind, would you give us that thumbs up and even hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already. But by all means, if you hated our video, then give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day and keep smiling.